All right, this video is part two of what we did yesterday, rational functions, where we're finding roots, vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, and y-intercepts. So as I start this problem, the first thing I need to do is factor it. Notice that these are x squared, so I need to look in to see if there's something I can factor. Now, anytime you see x squared plus something, um, there's a good chance you're not going to be able to factor it, because see, here's what's going to happen. x squared plus 1 equals 0. If you solve that, x squared equals negative 1. And then you have to take the square root of a negative number, and that's not possible. Okay? So not possible. Which means that there are no roots. Okay? So you would just say none in this situation. All right? It's a little weird, but just be prepared. That can happen. Now in the denominator, we need to factor as well for our, our uh, vertical asymptotes. So the next thing we need to do is find our vertical asymptotes. So we need to factor the denominator. This denominator will factor into x minus 5, x plus 2. And then I set each of those equal to 0. So I get x is 5 and x is negative 2. So I have two vertical asymptotes in this case. Horizontal asymptotes. Okay, this is Fabio Botnower eats DC. Look at the power of the x. x squared on top, x squared on bottom. The exponents are the same, so this is an eats dc. I divide the coefficients. So y will equal 1 over 1, which is just 1. Y-intercept? The rule says to replace every x with a 0. 0 plus 1 over 0 minus 3 times 0, which is 0, minus 10, which gives me negative 1 tenth. Be careful that you don't put negative 10. It's negative 1 over 10. So 0, negative 1 tenth. All right, so now I'm going to graph what I know. Now, are there, there are no roots, so that's important to remember as we graph. The vertical asymptotes um, are going to be at x equals 5. x equals 5 and negative 2. Okay. And then a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. y-intercept is at 0 and negative 1 tenths. It's just barely under the origin, but it's there. Now, that's all I have, but I still need to generate this graph. Okay? Remember the parent shape. You're going to have opposite L's in this far corner somewhere. And then, in this case, we have two vertical asymptotes. So we have something going on in the middle. Now, let's look at this. Um, in the middle, anytime you have a middle section, it's either going to take the shape of a quadratic or a cubic. All right. Now, there's a way to know by just looking at it. Look at the section between the two vertical asymptotes. Are there any roots in there? Any place that crosses the x-axis? In this example, there is not. Therefore, it cannot be a cubic because a cubic would automatically cross the x-axis. Therefore, it has to be a parabola. So then the question is, is it opening up or opening down? Well, the same idea applies. It cannot cross the x-axis. So if it opens up, it would have to cross. So we know that's an illegal move. So the only way it can open is open down. Okay, to the left of this vertical asymptote, I need to test an x value. 1, 2, 3. So negative 3. Negative 3. If I plug this into the equation, I get negative 3 squared, which is 9 plus 1, negative 3 is 9, negative 3 times negative 3 is 9, minus, sorry, that's a minus 10, so I have a 10 over 18 minus 10 is 8, well that's 1 and 2 eighths, or 1 and 1 fourth, so that's a little bit above 1. So that means it's up here, my asymptote's at 1, so if it's a little bit above 1, then it's up here, above that asymptote. So the curve is going to do this right here. Now on the right side of this far right asymptote, I need to check this x value as well. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to ch check where x is 6 and see what the y value would be. So 6 squared is 36 plus 1 is 37. 36 minus 18 minus 10, which is 37 over... 18 minus 10 would be 8. So, bottom line, this is a positive number greater than 1, which means it would be above this asymptote curving this way. So, we have two asymptotes. We have a middle section. 
so there's a little bit more work involved with these, but it's the same basic idea of yesterday. Let's try another one. All right, first thing we need to do is factor. So I hope that you can recognize this as a difference of squares. All right, now let's dive into our roots. Roots, you're going to set the factors in the numerator equal to 0. So x is negative 3, x is 3. So I have two roots, negative 3, 0, and 3, 0. Vertical asymptotes, set the denominator of factors and equal to 0. So x is negative 2, x is 2. Make sure you're putting things in the correct form. Horizontal asymptotes. All right, is this Bobby Obatna or Eads DC? Well, exponents are the same, therefore it's an Eads DC. I divide the coefficients, y equals 1. Y intercept, put in 0 for x, so I have 0 minus 9 over 0 minus 4, which gives me a positive 9 over 4, so 0 and 9 fourths. All right, now let's plot these points, okay? Our roots at negative 3. 0 and a positive 3, 0. And we have asymptotes at negative 2 positive 2. Ready? And a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. Alright. And a y-intercept at 0 and 9 fourths. Okay, 9 fourths, if you make that a mixed number, 4 goes into 9 2 times and 1 fourth. So it's 2 and 1 fourth. So 1, 2. So it's up here. Now, we have something in every section which is very helpful. We know the curve has to go through these points. Okay, the curve is going to hug the asymptotes here. And over on the right, we know the curve is going to hug the asymptotes here, but go through that, that root. And in the middle, we have a point right here that crosses the y axis. But notice we have no roots. Nothing is going to cross the x-axis, which means it's a parabola, and it has to open up. Otherwise, it would cross the x-axis. So it's just a parabola opening up. All right? Let's try one more example. Again, the first step is to factor top, factor the bottom, x minus 1, x plus 4. All right? So we factored it, and then we can do roots. Roots come from the top, so I set the top is equal to zero. Solve it. So I have two roots. Vertical asymptotes, set those equal to the bottoms, sorry, equal to zero. So x is one, x is negative four. These are these are lines, remember, so I can leave them in this format. Horizontal asymptotes, Bobbio Botno reads DC. Put the power of 2 on top, power of 2 on bottom. So I divide the coefficients, and they both are 1, so it's just y equals 1. All right, and y intercepts. Put in a 0 for x. 0 plus 0 plus 2 over 0 plus 0 minus 4. That reduces to negative 1 half. So I have 0 and negative 1 half. Okay, now I'm going to graph these pieces that I know. Negative 2, 0, negative 1, 0. Vertical asymptote at x equals 1. And x equals negative 4. Horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. and a y-intercept at 0, negative 1 half. Okay, so I know quite a bit about what's going on in the middle here. I know the curve has to go through all three of these points, and that's going to give us the shape along those asymptotes. So it's a problem curving down. Now, to the left of this left-hand vert vertical asymptote, I need to pick an x value. So this is negative 4. This x value would be negative 5. We're just going to run it through the equation and see what y value comes out. So I get 25 minus 15 plus 2, 12. 
over 25 minus 15 minus 4. That's 10 minus 4, which is 6. So that's a positive 2. So at 1, 2, that curve exists up here. All right. Now we pick an x value over in this section where x is positive 2. Let's see what we get. So 4 plus 12 plus 2. So 4 plus 6 minus 4. So 16, 17, 18 over 6. Well, that's a 3. So that's 2, 3. So my curve is up here. That's what I needed to know. The curve is doing this side. Now I have something in each section. It passes the vertical line test, so I should be good to go. Now on this one, I want you to try this one on your own. Follow the same steps that we did before and bring any questions you might have with you to class. Good luck and see you then.